Welcome to the next lecture on wireless communication. Today we will continue our discussion on interference, co-channel interference. And uh, we will do an example. See, I told you that we want signal to interference ratio to be as high as possible. So there will be some minimum, uh, you know, signal to interference uh, ratio required, right? Suppose if your signal to interference ratio is below some threshold, Right, if it is less than some threshold, then there may be some issue. We will not be able to detect the signal properly. There will be a lot of interference because see, as by I will be decreased either by increase in uh, it will be decreased either by decrease in signal power. Okay, not much uh, common, but it will be possible that interference is too much. Right, so we have to design the system properly. Suppose as an example. If uh, S by I ratio required is 15 dB at least, so it should be at least 15 dB for satisfactory forward channel performance of cellular system. Then we need to see that uh, what is the uh, you know frequency reuse factor n? What n should we use? And what should be the cluster size for uh, you know maximum capacity? Suppose we are given that path loss exponent is four. Okay. And also we are given that there are six co-channel cells. That is, there are six cells which have same frequency as in the previous example we did in previous class. And they are all, uh, they are all at same distance. Okay. So let's say that the path loss exponent is four. Okay. Now you know the equation for path loss where path of exponent appears. So you have this S by I is equal to r to the power minus n summation okay and uh, it, it's now divided by so since distance is same you know that this formula will become simply uh, i naught times uh, d to the power minus n so this we also wrote as you know it, it became d by r to the power n 1 over i naught right so which becomes 1 over i naught go to the previous lecture I, there i have explained it. now n here is 4 that is what path loss exponent means it is here 4 now we will do something called heat and trial so let's say that let us take n is equal to 7 this is the reuse factor okay n is equal to 7 means the famous thing we did in the uh, first class of cellular systems this type of right this is a b c d e f g they will all use different frequencies and then we will repeat it okay this is n is equal to 7 so n is equal to, for n is equal to 7 this s by i uh, ratio comes out to be so i naught is 6 because there are 6 co channel uh, you know cells so it is 1 over 6 under root of 3 times 7 to the power 4 so you compute it it becomes approximately 4.583 okay and what is the s by i ratio by this formula so sorry sorry i have written here sorry so this is n so this is this is no, this is d by r okay this actually is q d by r and s over i will be equal to uh, 1 over 6 times uh, so yeah let me so there will not be exponent here if you recall that q is equal to under root of 3n so i'm first computing that okay then this is s uh, 1 by 6 root 3n to the power 4 right so 1 over 6 into 4.583 to the power 4 it becomes 75.3 and then you take 10 log to the base 10 of 75.3 it will be 18.66 dB. Okay. Now it has worked because what was the minimum SI, S by I ratio needed? It was 18 dB. 
this minimum as by error if you need it will be an experimental thing okay or it may come out after a lot of experience that what is the minimum s by i ratio required for a cylinder system and then when we have to design a cylinder system anywhere so we have to decide that how many areas we should keep with different frequencies right how many uh, cells we should keep with different frequencies so now we are getting the s by i ratio if we take seven cells in a cluster right uh, then we are getting s by i ratio to be 18.66 db it means it works so it means n is equal to 7 can be used but you know sometimes you may feel it is very close so okay so you may choose even higher uh, you know number of this uh, uh, you know cluster uh, size that is also okay similarly you can you know this is actually solved example i'm just explaining it you just see the other parts they are almost same okay you have to hit and try suppose if n is equal to 7 didn't work we would have tried n, uh, n next n okay which was permissible you know you have to be very careful if you want to take next n that has to follow this equation where i and j are integers positive integers okay okay now uh, since uh, we have we have no very less time so i thought to teach you now something which is uh, really difficult to understand by yourself so i would uh, try to make that very uh, simple uh, so there are some couple of things which you have to study of your own. They are very simple. So it is sort of a reading assignment. That is the handover. Okay? There is nothing big mathematics there. So just study the handover uh, section of Rappaport. Okay? Very simple. Okay, Handover is nothing but suppose you are uh, in this cell. Right? And now you are in a car and you are moving to the next cell. Right? So what should base station do when you move to next cell? How should the base station decide that handover has happened or not? There are some simple uh, logical uh, you know things there. Nothing big mathematical. So you study that of your own. Okay. That I don't want to waste time in that. So I will go directly to something called small scale fading effect. Let me explain what does it mean small scale. And there is versus there is another thing called large scale scale fading effect that also we will explain okay so let me first briefly tell you about large scale suppose suppose here is a base station okay and you are moving away from the base station so now large scale fading effects are prominent when you significantly move what it means is suppose you are here with your mobile and you just moved here so the signal from base station will not appear to be too much you know weak you don't you will not feel any change but when you will cover large distance definitely at this point the signal of base station will be weaker right i'm just giving you a very layman type of explanation but small scale fading effects is such there are such effects that even if you move by lambda amount which is the wavelength and which is very length, small, you know, even if you move by the lambda wavelength, you will feel some fluctuation or change in the signal. Not only that, in case of wireless environment, even if you are stationary, you are not moving, but because of other objects moving, you will feel change in the signal strength. So we will first study the uh, this small scale fading effect, okay. And because this is more important, uh, you know, from wireless communication point of view, and then we will uh, also study this large scale fading effect. Now, to explain this small scale fading effect, first of all, I will not use for this part. I will not use uh, Rappaport book, and that book is not good for understanding this. Rather, I will use one uh, one part of chapter of David Say. Okay, you don't need to go through the book, you just go through my videos. But for sake of uh, you know yourself, I can share you the PDF of that part of chapter, okay, with you, no issues, which you need. But if you just attend my video, that is sufficient. Now we will take first of all a case of free space. Okay. 
free space means you are communicating just like a satellite communication okay so there is nothing uh, uh, in between then you have fixed transmitting antenna and receive antenna okay now how will uh, the field you know appear you know that what we transmit via antenna is the sinusoidal wave right so if at the source if you transmit it cos of 2 pi ft where f will be the definitely carrier frequency so this is the source right see i'm not writing your amplitude and other things i'm just writing one part just if you to call your am or fm or even bpsk or qpsk okay so in addition to this uh, amplitude part so there is this main part is the cosine signal right or the sine signal so that is what is transmitted then uh, what will be when you transmit at the antenna so at distance r r and time t okay what will be the response at distance r so i will write that response in terms of you know electric field see here is one fact first of all in free space the power is decreasing as 1 over r square hence electric field if you people know the relationship between power and electric field will decrease as 1 by r right you see electric field is related to voltage and power is proportional to voltage square so hence electric field has to decrease by 1 by r now at time t you transmitted this signal so here is the source you transmitted signal so uh, at distance r and this r is far from antenna this is important you might have studied in antenna theory then the field pattern near the antenna is very complicated but as we move away from the antenna something called far field that is well understood and has a good mathematical structure so <laughs> when we go far so how, how will the signal appear so cos of 2 pi f now the signal has trans has covered the r length so hence the time taken for signal from antenna to this point is r by c c is the speed of light so it will be t minus r by c right and divided by r there will be a constant i will call that alpha this constant depends upon you know uh, radiation pattern radiation pattern of antenna so you don't worry about its understanding because we will not need it later on this is not, not it may depend upon uh, there are some parameters you know azimuthal angle and other uh, you know direction angle and frequency so this comes from antenna theory so for us it is just a constant okay nothing else so this i can represent as electric field so hence electric field at frequency f at time t and three parameters r theta and psi these are the three uh, parameters for pattern is equal to some pattern constant which depends on theta psi and f cos of 2 pi f t minus r by c divided by r okay so we are not here concerned about finding the radiation pattern that i will repeat it only again so that you don't really become confused about it okay now this was a transmitted antenna now suppose at distance r we have a received antenna okay so how will the received antenna signal how will he receive the signal i will write that as er again function of f t and let me call this as u r theta psi as u 
so it will have its own radiation pattern i will call it alpha again we are not concerned about that the main thing is change in the cosine signal cos 2 pi f t minus r by c divided by r so you can say that its pattern is almost same okay now here is one you can see a remarkable thing we can think about it you can treat see this transmit antenna receive antenna and the space in between you can treat it as a system okay as if you have a system and you transmitted some signal right e and you received a signal er with this little field and you have some particular transfer function also for this so we can represent wireless system as linear time invariant system okay that is uh, one you can say a remarkable thing because it will really simplify things later on okay we'll come back to this again uh, when we will try to model the channel now this was a very simple setup now let's take scenario very first wireless or practical mobile scenario we are in free space but we have a moving antenna antenna is moving so in this scenario we have a received antenna so here is a transmit antenna but receive antenna suppose it is moving with velocity v you are with a mobile and you are moving with velocity v okay then uh, this distance from this antenna will now be function of time right okay let's say that initially it was a distance r naught and then it started moving with velocity v so at time t the distance will, uh, the distance from will be r naught plus v so at time t is equal to 0 r of 0 is r naught it was initially at r naught and then it started moving right so then what will be the electric field so it will be function of f of course now t but it will be now function of r naught plus v t also i don't care about now antenna so here is alpha s some pattern constant cos of 2 pi f t minus r naught plus v t by c right divided by instead of r again it will be now r naught plus v t see we are basically main worried about these changes in uh, denominator as well as the changes in this phase right this is very simple now the inside thing of f of t minus r naught by c plus v t by c we can also write it as f of 1 minus v by c t right by taking this t as comma minus then f r naught by c so what has happened is that if you see at this part it looks like the frequency was actually f but now there is a shift in frequency by amount minus f v by c and this we call as doppler shift and this has happened because of the motion of the receiver right Now let's take another scenario that is of reflecting wall but fixed antenna okay in that you have suppose here transmit antenna and here is a wall 
this distance is d right and you are here suppose you are stationary not moving and you are at a distance from this transmitter but now you are not only getting the incident wave from this side you are also getting the refracted wave also what will be the effect of you know uh, this wall what will be the effect of this reflection okay so very simple uh, you know reflection changes the phase so at the receiver your electric field can be written as alpha so one is cos so one part is directly at distance r cos of 2 pi f t minus r by c divided by r nice and the second part will be minus alpha because there is a 180 degree phase shift so minus alpha cos 2 pi f t minus now you have to see how much distance has been covered so this signal which comes from this point and then <laughs> here how much distance covers this is d plus how much is this this is d minus r so d plus d minus r which is 2d minus r so it it should be 2d minus r by c divided by 2d minus r very simple there is nothing big i am just using basic mathematics and basic physics here now the receiver receives something called superposition of two waves superposition of two waves both at frequency f what is the phase difference between the two phase difference is so what is the phase of uh, second part it is 2 pi f 2d minus r by c now while computing the phase difference i will do one thing i will write here plus and i will write plus pi inside that is more okay okay this is plus pi this is better this is the phase of this term minus phase of first term 2 pi f r by c this i will represent as delta of theta okay so how much will be this just compute it will become 4 pi f by c d minus r plus pi we know that if this phase difference is an integer multiple of 2 pi then what will happen constructive interference will happen similarly if it is if it is odd multiple suppose 2n minus 1 of pi then destructive interference will happen right so now so now here is although it is not moving but as a function of r if you change this r this receiver will receive you know a special pattern of constructive and destructive interference of the waves so if you move suppose now if you change the r you will get sometimes uh, peak sometimes valley right so what will be this peak to valley distance okay so initially this this is your transmitter right so your r was first here and then r is here at this r the phase change was uh, integer multiple of 2 pi you got constructive interference and here you got destructive interference now this distance is called distance between these two points why you move from a constructive to destructive interference this is called coherence distance okay and is denoted by delta xc and it can be easily derived right so uh, when delta theta is suppose uh, 2 pi right so let's write 4 pi f by d d minus let's say r1 is distance at that point plus pi is 2 pi then you have 4 pi f divided by sorry c 
d minus r2 plus pi is equal to pi. So this part is constructive part. This is the phase when it is constructive, and this is for destructive. Right. So now if you subtract the two, what will you get? So first of all, uh, four pi d by c minus r one four pi so f by c plus pi minus four pi f by c d uh, plus four pi f r two by c and minus pi is equal to 2 pi minus pi. I am doing very simply. So pi pi gets cancelled. 4 pi dfc, 4 pi dfc gets cancelled. So I have r2 minus r1 times 4 pi f by c is equal to pi. So this pi and pi also goes. So r2 minus r1 is the, this is called coherence distance that x c times uh, is equal to c divided by 4 f. c by f is lambda. So lambda by 4. So delta x c is lambda by 4. See, see this is small scale effect, right? It means that if you change r just by one fourth of wavelength, you will uh, at one point you will get the constructive interference, you will get the maximum signal, at other point you will get destructive interference. This is the small scale fading effect. Okay. I will continue with this discussion. We will after that we will do when there is a reflecting wall and antenna is moving also with some speed v. What will happen? So this these small small models will prepare us for a large picture of small scale fading. And finally, I will show you briefly how to use statistical modeling, probabilistic modeling for small scale uh, effects and how to model the wireless channel. Okay, thank you for listening.